let's talk about bubbles. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I'm drinking a chamomile tea. Um, I do not have the bag with me right now, but it is delicious. Mm -mm -mm. In today's video, we're going to talk about bubbles. Uh, this was inspired from the last two weeks, a five-hour meditation I did with some people on my Discord. A bunch of things happened in the last two weeks, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to talk about choosing your bubble. I have a lot of videos on bubbles coming, but in particular, I think we should start at the basics of choosing one. Now, this is a concept that I think many of us understand, bubbles. I was in this bubble, and I'm in this bubble. What I'm saying is, like, you're all in bubbles. Like, you must know you are in another bubble related to their bubbles. Like, you, you, yes, say it out loud. I need you to acknowledge it. I don't even know what you mean when you say that, but sure, we're, I'm in a bubble related to the bubbles. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> We're all in the bubbles. Real quick, I, yeah. that could be possible. I would be curious what type of guy it is. Maybe because I might be, this might be my bubble because of the industry that I work in. Katie went on Chelsea Handler's podcast, Dear Chelsea, and revealed that she'd been living in Kentucky for a month now, saying that leaving Hollywood has allowed her to understand people better. She did say that people in Kentucky definitely live in a bubble, but admitted that people in Hollywood do too. Wait, let me just, let me what just, let me just gotta go. I agree with you. What? It's but here's why here. I disagree it's with you. Here. Because I think on the internet, everything seems very hopeless and everything seems very generic sort of one size seems to fit all like uh there's seemingly no individuality outside of communities and this all um as Brittany Simo says sort of bubbles but for some reason when I explain it sometimes people don't quite mean the same thing I mean so I'll define it what I think a bubble is it's a way of existence Okay, so here's Brittany existing and then everything outside of her is existence and it is something that is existing so I Brittany grew up in a Catholic immigrant bubble. I grew up in Orange County, which is a bubble, right? And I grew up um, in a large family homeschooler bubble. Uh, bubbles represent cultural divides, which represent stereotypes. And then when you think about a bubble, you can think of something you're trapped in, visit, hop back and forth, one bubble to one bubble to one. Or you can think of something, uh, you can think of it as like a home. So I like to believe that I've curated my own bubble in which I exist in my own home. When you enter my home, you're entering my home, my place of peace and joy. I'm a YouTuber. I never leave the house. I'm definitely one of those people that like loves her space. And then outside of me, when I interact with different parts of the existence, I am interacting with other people's bubbles, other people's homes, other people's belief systems, other people's cultures. Right now, you could argue I'm in the 420 weed bubble because I'm baked as hell for this podcast. But I also think what's important is that we recognize that I'm also in the medical chronic pain bubble because I'm high, not only because I don't I mean, I want to be, but also I'm in an insane amount of pain and I really need some weed to help me get through the day sometimes because I recently got diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder in May and I'm not quite used to it yet. So weed is one of those things that I do recreationally because I want to feel warm and fuzzy, but also I do medically. So I'm in both of these bubbles and yet I don't know anything about them. I was at the dispensary. I'll give an example. And someone says something about a weed event that's happening and I'm like oh I, I don't know what event that is what is it and they're like well, you smoke weed and you don't know what this is and I'm like I don't I love weed I really enjoy it I've been doing it since I was 28 I'm 33 I I have a lot of benefits associated with weed right but I don't know anything about weed culture really I mean I know who Snoop Dogg is and we've was Khalifa I've seen was live you know I I know that but I don't know what is weed culture really? Like I have a brother who probably could tell you like the strains and the effects and what they all do. But see, that's not me. I, again, I like drugs. I've done DMT. I've done acid. I've done all these things. I love shrooms. I love, you know, I love it. But I don't know anything about it. I'm not the person who like knows the legislation or knows how to make it at home necessarily. And I'm the kind of person who has like a very this is for meditative purposes and or sometimes recreational, sometimes party purposes kind of person, but I've never been to a rave, right? Like I don't quite fit, fit into certain bubbles, but I do bubble hop into different ones. Somebody the other day at the dispensary said, oh my gosh, Brittany, you would be perfect at a rave. And I said, a, a rave? And they're like, yeah, you're upbeat. Your personality is so social. Like you're so social. It's warm, blah, blah, blah. I didn't go to a rave in my 20s when I had chances, I had friends who, you know, loved ecstasy and were like Berkeley students who would go to raves all the time. And like I've had options and I just didn't take it. I'm not a rave girl. I don't belong in that bubble. 
When you think about a bubble, what are you looking for? You're looking for a home. You're looking for your joy. So when you ask yourself, like, how do I find my bubble? You're really asking yourself, how do I find my joy? You're asking, maybe I am a meat eater my whole life, but then I have a a change of heart, but I live in the country with cowboys and I want to become a vegan. Well, maybe the best bubble to hop into is another vegan bubble instead of a meat bubble. But maybe you hit the vegan bubble in Seattle or Portland and decide, you know what? I don't like these people. They're not my vibe. But then you end up in like middle America and find this old country person who was progressive enough to like, you know, let's say not make fun of vegans, but also is vegan, but also doesn't make it their identity, but is vegan. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe there's a bubble within a bubble within a bubble. Okay. Do other people make bubbles? Yes, but we do as well. We are all making bubbles together. It's sort of a consenting relationship, sort of, but it also just is a part of living in a society. One group of people says, hey, I know things are this way. I'd like to change it. They changing the bubble, right? If I lived in New York, that's one bubble. If I lived in LA, different bubble. Uh, New York girls, LA girls, different, right? What if I went to New York and said, I want it to be more like LA, or I went to LA and said, I want this to be more like New York. Then I am asking the people around me to shift the bubble and change it into something else so I can feel comfortable and or maybe I just want some chaos. I think some people do that just for chaos. Okay, so you're putting together your joy. You're trying to facilitate your purpose. Your purpose is related to your joy, but not necessarily the reason for your joy, though I think we can all agree that it definitely helps. I think as you bubble hop or maybe don't even bubble hop, but have different relationships in your same bubble, what you're doing is gathering tools to facilitate your joy. So if you're already in a bubble, like Farm Brother was born into the perfect bubble for who he is. You see how he's so proudly Catholic. He's so proudly himself. There is no one on this planet who's going to bully or make fun of my brother into ever changing his like value system, right? He is who he is. You take it or leave it. He's never needed to leave the Catholic bubble. He's always been Catholic. I think he stopped going to church for maybe like six months on high school maybe but otherwise he's always been in the church right he like has always loved Christ um and so his relationship is one where he never had to leave his bubble to find peace in it but he had to grow within the bubble so here's my friend brother he's a young person everyone says he's going to be successful he's going to be amazing he's going to you know do all these things they love him So he goes and he looks for those dreams and he burns bridges or builds bridges or, you know, he finds out who he is. But in in his growth, finds conflict. What does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a good husband? He's under 30 and he's about, you know, he just had his fourth kid at his 30th year. So he's a person who's had a mortgage, who's, you know, had to sell a home. He's doing all these things. He's learning, you know, that's all still within the, the belief system of the bubble that's been created for him. He never had to become like an atheist or go do sex work or switch to Jehovah Witness. He never had to like bubble hop really to find out who he was. To become the best version of him and to find his joy, he just needed to stay in the bubble he was born in. So not everyone needs to leave their bubbles, but I do think in a lifetime you still crash into bubbles. So because I am Farm Brothers' sister, I force him to meet new bubbles. I force him to interact with the YouTube bubble. I, not force, you know, because like he consents, he's a man. But like, you know, I, by being my friend, it forces him, do we all understand what I'm trying to say? forces him into understanding the BDSM bubble, the sex worker bubble, um, the female, the girls who have fr- boys who are friends bubble. Like, you know, my farm brother and his wife, they don't have opposite sex friends except for couple friends. Um, and then like they have individual girl and boyfriends, like friends of the same gender because they wouldn't really need to have opposite se- gender friends. Neither of them are those people, but I am one of those people. I have a lot of male friends, okay? Anyway, so you're in your life. You are where you are and you're watching this video. So now you're in Britney's bubble, okay? So now you get to decide because you're listening to me say it, but you don't have to listen to me, right? I'm just a person. This helped me. It might not help you. If you feel yourself out of sync with the people around you, if you feel your joy slipping away, if you feel like it never existed, if you feel like life is just this fucking cage, take a deep breath and turn the fuck around. Just turn left and go that way. Basically, you're trying to force yourself into another part of the planet or within your city or within your whatever to gain a tool and a realization that of course there's more than your fucking six feet radius like that you're you can see like of course there is more to life habibi than youtube channels and drama and fucking hollywood stars and i don't know what else is going on in the world i'm kind of out of sync there's so much more in life than just whatever you think you're seeing if you find yourself being crushed by the weight of your bubble turn left just turn left and walk This is a metaphor, but also like, okay, just the point is, is you have free will. 
and or you don't have free will, but you're still doing something. If you don't have free will, but you can still like or dislike this video or leave me a comment telling me how good my hair looks today, you have enough free will to turn left, even if you don't think you do. There's a reason we end up doing the things we do. I think when you're looking for your right bubble, you're also looking for the most core part of yourself. So you guys know I think we have like eight parts and those eight core parts don't encompass all of who you are, but it's like the important things, kind of like a core memory, but a core part. So when you're thinking about what bubble do I want to be in all the time, my brother Mark and I just talked about this, which bubble we chose. So realistically, outside of the one that I've made for myself, and I will have a video on how to make your own bubble later, but, um, and please let me know if that's what you would like, comment for the algorithm, like for the algorithm. I want to make this like as clear as possible that a bubble, I believe, is an idea, an opinion, a, a state of being where you are interacting with existence, right? So let's say I go out into a field of bunnies. Now I'm in the bunnies bubble. I'm in the nature bubble. This bubble isn't about me because I'm not the loudest voice there. So really bubbles are usually curated by the loudest voices there right? So you're, you're, um, so you have your core parts and the loudest core part is going to coincide with the bubble you end up choosing. So as an example for myself, I always give my queer self, my BDSM self, and my YouTube self. Those are my like, let's say three top core selves that interact with existence. So when I'm choosing a bubble bigger than the one I made for myself, I have to choose one of those. So I chose the YouTube bubble, I think is the most important. So my job, what I'm doing here, I spend most of my time, right? That's like a big time. Let's say half my time working, focusing on that Brittany and then living in that bubble. Like I even chose the place on YouTube I'm at. I'm There's a reason I'm friends with Abba and Kyla and Steven and I'm friends with now all these other people like Cherry and Genevieve and all these other people I can talk to now, Irrelevant and all these people because we all gravitate towards the same part of YouTube. And so there must be a part of all of us that is so similar enough that we found ourselves here. Just like with you guys, my audience. There is overlap for a reason. There's a reason you like my content. There's a reason sometimes when you guys say things, I'm like, oh my God, I feel so seen because some part of your brain can understand me. The people I think who upset are upset the most with me, who are frustrated the most by me, can't see me. So they think I'm one thing when I'm another. Like if a guy looks at me and genuinely can't see me as anything but an OnlyFans girl, his bubble has only allowed him to view women on OnlyFans as OnlyFans girls. He's limited his scope in, into seeing the broader person because of this one detail versus farm brother, though conservative, knows me as his sister and knows so much about the layers of Britney that the idea that his sister would only be an OnlyFans girl is so weird to him. He's like, you're so many other things. You know what I mean? So... It is what it is, right? Farm Brother can see parts of me. Some people on the internet can't. So I can't be that upset about it. And I'm really not. I get a little worried sometimes that the bubbles are going to go crazy and like kill me or like cancel me and to, in, in, in such a way that would be harmful. So again, when you're picking your bubbles, you are, you are always going back to that core self, some core self. Now there's the core, core, core self that I think defines your personality and your identity. Mine is mother, right? But there are versions of the core selves that, again, are complementary to where you're living. So let's say if you're trying to figure out like who you are as a consciousness, you would focus on the core part of yourself that is your identity. Mine is mother. If you're looking for like what is your core self when it comes to environmental living? Mine is country. Mine is in city girl. So like my core, like my country self, my pride and prejudice, my wild flowers and fields of like trees – that version of Brittany is louder than the version of Brittany that dreams about living in the city and being like in Manhattan in a, in a tall skyscraper where like some part of me wants to be Meryl Streep on the Devil Wars Prada, but she's not a core self. She's not very loud, but she's there. There is a version of Brittany in my head that lives that life, but I just, she's not loud enough for me to care. The girl in the Pride and Prejudice dress running around pregnant in a field full of bunnies, that is 1000% a very loud part of my brain. And if I don't have that future... I'm just going to feel like I didn't serve one of my core parts. So again, we're facilitating the core part of yourself that is your personality, the core part of yourself that is living in an environment, and the core part of yourself that is with the people of the environment. So let's talk about the people in the environment. So I chose a country town that fulfills my location, but the vibe of the city ended up being very complimentary to who I am. It's quite centrist. Let's go Brandon flags and LGBT flags in Pride Month. So it's not as conservative as like um, 
Texas might be, but it's not progressive like California or Portland would be. It's like right there in the middle, and I like it a lot. I like where I live. I think it's interesting. People mind their own business. It's a really small town. Um, I don't have to deal with like traffic or any of the things I hate in the city. It really is a great life. The people here in particular are um, kind of like tongue in cheek, and then they're kind of the people that like work up for the weekends like work for beer money so they're like really easy going but sort of like lazy but like not lazy like they're productive enough to get their bills paid and they're productive enough to enjoy the weekend but they're not like gonna hustle and bustle which is why I like it because it's a place I can be lazy but I can also look good like the fashion here that country fashion, but most of the time it's a very chill town that isn't very judgy. So I really like living here even if the internet is very bad. When you're picking a bubble, we're thinking about the personality, so mine is mother, the location, mine is country, and then the people, mine is centrist. As much as I love being a progressive and I feel like I very much am one in spirit, politically sometimes I lean more right, but not really because I never vote Republican. So I live in a very weird world where I want more personal responsibility and I want community effort. And I find that living in towns that are more centrist kind of give me that feeling so I can trust my neighbors more as well. I definitely live in a very safe place, even though the statistics will tell you otherwise, the people here are safe. Nothing ever happens and everyone ends up being okay. So again, we're looking for complementary core selves when picking a bubble. The next is considering family and personal needs. So you're thinking about your needs. What are your core needs? Mine would be family as my example, okay? How important, to, how important is feeding that core part? You know, now that I'm in a relationship, uh, it's transferred a little bit. So when I'm single, I wanna live near my siblings or friends, inner circle. When I'm in a couple like I am now, I just want to live with them. I don't really feel as clingy to my family and I'm a very needy person. I like hanging out with my people. I know I'm going to die one day and I don't want to waste time not living near people I love. So I try to be near people I love or at least fly out to see people once a month or something, something. But I live with my brother now, so that's really great, right? Just saw a farm brother. He just came to town. It was awesome. Um, <clears throat> so now that I'm partnered, I find myself just thinking that he is my main home. And so my needs have gone from people to person, but the frequency is the only thing that changed. So if I wasn't partnered, I'd love to see my friends and family like every month. But since I am partnered and because we want to make a family, that takes a that's like a huge responsibility to me. And I want to really focus on that relationship and curating it. So my friends and I would probably see each other every summer instead, like hang out with my husband most of the year, you know, do collaborations and work on YouTube, but really focus on vacation time since my family's all spread out traveling just during the summer, something like that. Right. You have to pay attention to the core part of your needs, but also how they're going to change over time. Once I have children, I'll probably also need to see my family a little bit less, but that doesn't mean I don't talk to them more. So my family, if we live apart, we just talk more. We talk on the phone all the time. Every day we're sending Marco Polos. We're always sending Snapchats. We're always on Instagram. So my family has apps just for family. Like my parents got social media apps just to stay in touch with each other because that's what we're going to have to do if we're not going to live together, right? So my needs shifted and changed as my life changed, which is beautiful. My personality is the same. Loyalty, family, consistency, those are the things I strive for in my joy. And I have to pick the bubbles that make the most sense for those things to be met. So when you're going out and just having a day, let's say you're going out to the store, you're going out to the club, you're going out to work, start paying attention. What things start to bother you? What things do you love about where you live? What things do you see yourself needing what kind of people do you gravitate towards that feed like that feed you and your positivity and your optimism? You know, one of my favorite things about bubble hopping is like tool collection, like tool collecting. And you can meet that everywhere. You can go to the homeless bubble. You can go to the pessimist bubble. You can go to the drug addict bubble. You can go to the sex worker bubble. You can go to the priest bubble. You can go to so many places, meet so many different kinds of people and learn about them. Um, recently, I've been thinking about um, – uh, like different kinds of callers, like what kind of bubbles would talk to me, you know, there are people that I've never even talked to, like some type of person exists in the world that I've yet to talk to, even though I talk to hundreds of people a year, there's still so many unique categories of human and bubble that I still haven't talked to every single one. And I, I just can't wait for the possibility of meeting someone that I'm like, oh, I've never talked to your bubble before. Somebody on a live show asked me if I ever think or um, discover a new bubble that like shocks me. To be honest, I think now I'm just 
eagerly waiting for all of them to show themselves now that I'll see them all before I die. Before, I used to be shook, like, <gasps> and it felt like, oh my God, I was learning something new. My mind was blown. But now I just know anything is possible. So now I'm just like, ooh, tell me more. Like, I find myself being curious more than shocked. And that's why I think bubbles are so cool and it's so human and it's so okay. One of the um, things we've recently been discussing on our VC is about the morning through the process of bubble popping. Bubble popping can be a very emotional process because like that commenter said, like, do any of the bubbles shock you? What we're asking is, does it shock you that you find out people live differently than you? That's really what we're shocked by. People live differently than us and we're not always going to understand it and that's where the morning comes in because it is very hard to look out into the world and see how people are all living differently and we're not getting along and there's this dream we all have of all getting along but since I don't think like squashing diversity is the way to do it and I don't think that teaching tolerance is going to help because tolerance isn't helpful. Nobody's really tolerant. We are tolerant on a spectrum, right? We are all differently tolerant. I can be tolerant of a screaming child on an airplane, sometimes better than other people, but that doesn't mean everyone is the same or needs to be the same sort of tolerant. So what we're struggling struggling with, what we're really doing is battling each other's bubbles for some sort of victor, some sort of this is the answer, this is how we should all be. But I don't think that's the answer. I think the answer is diversity, but being okay with the fact that because of diversity, we'll always have chaos. I have had this thought in my head for years. I've shared it when I was a conservative. I shared it when I was a liberal. I shared it when I was a progressive. I shared it when I was a feminist. I've been thinking this my whole life. We will never have peace because we have diversity. And that's, that's good. That's okay. Because we're all going to learn from each other. But we're not meant to live in each other's bubbles all the time. Sometimes I think good people can make good people feel crazy. Sometimes you can feel gaslit by your own community. Because even though they're good, they're helping you in a way that hurts you. So sometimes we have to move out of our communities, move back into different communities, move back into our old communities, move back into, you know, sometimes we just have to go forward. And you, the point is, is that if you're looking for a one size fits all answer, I think that's the delusion of the bubbles that is so dangerous. The idea that we could be on a planet of 8 billion people and have one way we should all exist is, I think, the biggest delusion. That's crazy. And yet it's so sane because it's exactly what kept you alive. Adaptation allowed us to form communities and societies and to move in one ecosystem that built culture and bubbles. And now we're here. So like the thing that let us survive through all those changes is also the reason why we'll always have like, it's always just going to be moving a different cycle, a different cycle, a different cycle, a different cycle. So like 100 years from now, we're going to be the boomers and everyone's going to make fun of us and everyone's going to think we're losers and Gen Zers are going to be the lame old people and every, you know what I'm saying? So a bubble, I think, is a construct created from either the mind of a single person or the shared connected agreement on reality of two people. Farm brother and I sat here together. We acknowledged we existed. We acknowledged that he's in the Catholic bubble or realm, as he would say, and I'm in the secular bubble or realm, realm, as he would say, and we're watching Fresh and Fit and they're in a different bubble. And then we're watching these women say things that are just so contrary to the way we were raised. Millions of people in my community were raised. So again, we can all talk about how we're having the same experience on earth, but we're like, we're really not. And we really have a different relationship with what's real based off of our bubbles. Some of you believe in magic. Some of you believe in um, God, but not magic. Some of you believe in magic and God. Some of you believe in sex work. Some of you don't. Some of you think we should work as a group. Some of you think we should work as individuals. We are all different. So when you tell me or ask me, like, how do I find my bubble? Who are you? And how do we facilitate your joy by this bubble? It's okay to move. It's okay to change. Try to serve the person you are in the moment and who you might be in the next 10 years and then go from there. I try my hardest to live for present Brittany and to keep 10 years from now Brittany in mind at all moments because I'm 33. She'll be 43. Oh, I can't wait to meet 40s Brittany. I think she's going to be great. But 40s Brittany is going to be different. Maybe she'll have kids. Maybe she'll have tighter tubes. Um, maybe she'll be in Europe. Maybe she'll be in America. I have no idea where she'll be. I have a hunch, but I don't know. So I have to do all the work now to facilitate um, an opportunity to gain tools for her later, but I can't forget to live in the present moment. I can't for forget to enjoy the bubble I'm in now because I might not be here. Right now I'm in the country bubble in America, but maybe I get married and I move to Europe and all of a sudden I'm experiencing a completely different world. Will I like it better? Will I like it worse? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think if I'm with my person, it will be great.
But then again, I probably would never would I never would have moved to Europe if I didn't have a person there. I would have been too scared, especially in a country that doesn't speak English as much as I wished. Girl, but how fun will that be to like hop bubbles and to see if I like it any better while still maintaining the bubble we've built together when we're at home. <clears throat> so my partner and I have our own bubble when we're together that we really like. It's definitely like a real safe space. It's like I can say anything in a void to him and it feels like a void. It feels like so safe, like it's never going to leave this like space, even even if it will, because realistically we tell stories. But you know what I mean? It's like it feels very good. Um. We'll be in Europe in that bubble, but then in our home, we'll be in the bubble we've curated ourselves, which is like really exciting. I hope that makes sense. I want to hear all your questions. Please be highly critical. I know I am baked, but I can handle it. Tell me everything that's on your mind in regards to this because I want to make another video about how to make your own bubble. And then I want to make a video uh, explaining the levels again, attempt number two, because again, I think... I think it's time to be a little bit more aggressive with why I think it's correct. Yeah. Okay. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. P.S. If you're new to my channel, I don't need you to think how I think. I want you to think how you think in order to find your joy. So if you are thinking in a way that I don't think that you think is really good and comes from a place of happiness and joy, I want to know about it. Leave a comment. I know a lot of people will come to me sometimes and say things like, you're wrong. Women are this and men are this and this is why I have to do this. Those are bubbles in which you feel like you have to do things out of defense. Is there anyone living a truly joyful life that they swear by, that they think is the greatest life to live? I want to know about those bubbles. What are those lives like? All of us know when we're in hard times. I assume you're not going to tell me your hard time stories. If you feel like you've really reached the, like, joy, I want to know what that lifestyle looks like for you. And do you think it could be a one-size-fits-all answer for all of us? All right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye. My head in real life on bed My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.